Welcome to the family with Fraternal Group, Hackmaster, Ralph Troy Basham, MD. And Andy Brant Bernard. Alex will be here. He'll surface. Maybe. She'll, she'll surface. I don't know if she's going to have both kids with her or what she's going to have with her. Whatever it takes. But um, so, Ralph, I, you know, we're going to have Matt and Alfonso come in once a month on a Tuesday. Yeah. And the next time, you should probably be here because you uh, rather enjoy wine yourself. Uh, on occasion. On rare occasion, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have a glass of wine. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, visiting with them. They, uh, how long is that, how long have they had their business? It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, Giancarlo, I, Giancarlo, Alfonso is. I call every Italian Giancarlo. <laughs> <laughs> Alfonso was one who taught me how to speak Italian like 35 years ago. Something. Like oh, that. really? Yeah. When he first got got to America, he was he was teaching. Uh, italian to americans wow. that's where i first met him all those years ago but very knowledgeable about wine really good guy matt's a great guy finds out and find out that he and tevin are from the same area in wisconsin so we're gonna have to hear about that every month uh, every, yeah. you go through that the, the old home week uh their the homecoming uh, uh podcast or broadcast so so, the, so they so, so they have their wine and they, i take it they mainly import italian wines no, nah, they go across the board, but I mean, okay. the real experts that, because uh, Matt does a great job too. So where are they from? Where is, where, where is, uh, where is no, uh, I mean, Alfonso like, from? What's the business are they? It is, we got it on the card right here. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up, Andy, because I want to give them a, a plug on this. Um, It's Matthew Craigstead. Why, what does that say? Wine. Merchants. It just says wine merchant. Yeah. Brand manager. Yeah. Is that what it says on the right side? I got to put my glasses on. Oh, you got to put your glasses on. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. Either do either that or do the pinhole kind of thing that you taught me. Yeah, the, there the, you go. The, yeah, the, the importation of wine is a big deal. Uh, world-class wines. Uh, Marty Allman was the owner of that. It was per, uh, then a number of years ago, it was purchased by Southern. And they uh, really initiated the um, importation of Italian wines and the sale of Italian wines into this market. Uh, and that was the D'Amico brothers who demanded that yeah, for their restaurant. That's exactly so they, right. So they started importing and uh, tasting and bringing those wines and familiarizing the area to Italian wines. And they're just just like France, just like Spain. There's a broad variety of wines that come uh, from Italy, which are can be exceptional. Uh, they were established 26 years ago, 1998. Wine Merchants wow. is the name of 1998. the 1998. Uh, 1998, yeah, been around for a long time. A lot of uh, a lot of wholesalers in this area. Um, there are a lot of wine wholesalers, which is interesting. Uh, the number and there's a, a number of them that are um, original to this area that have a lot of original wines that they then sell, they import and sell throughout the United States. So you look on the back of a number of wine bottles, liquor bottles, you'll see uh, Minnesota frequently as the importer of that. Like Kerman Lynch uh, is a big importer in California, I'm pretty mm. sure. There you go. We just got a request from a listener. Uh, Thomas, I'll just say it's Thomas, sent this uh, message. It says, we got to start on the uh, on the Tom Bernard morning show or this show. Start doing real porno title or not. <laughs> <laughs> Remember he used to do that on KQ? That was a while ago. That was a long, long time ago. I can't remember. I guess everybody just kind of kind of threw in their uh, their version of what that should be all about. But Thomas, we will try to get that set up and use a real porno movie title or not. I'll get uh, everybody working on that. That That's a great oh, idea. You know, us. another one, you know, just uh, uh, thinking about the wine merchants, you could do real wine or not, real, real wine, wine yeah, label or not. That's true. That's easy. Because <laughs> they might be pornographic anyway. So, you know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Real, yeah, real uh, wine label or not, uh, real restaurant or not. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that uh, you could really play on there. It'd be fun. No question about it. But it was very, very nice to have those guys in. They're just, a, you know, Alfonso and Matt are such great guys. Wine Merchants, again, is the name of their company. What happened? Come in. It, but we did talk about the fact that you, you would go to a let's say a liquor bar or a wine bar, you, you might be able to see a fight there once in a while. I have never seen a fist fight at a wine bar in my life. <laughs> that's a, no, no, you're going to, that's a different kind of bar. It really is a, a different kind of bar. That's, that's a bar that serves uh, vodka, soda, and beer. 
that's and, and I've talked to a number of uh, bartenders, and you can you you can ask the bartender, do you know how to make such and such drink? And uh, what's that? And I said, what kind of what kind, where do you work? And they, and they say, oh, uh, oh, and then when they say where it is, I say, oh, you serve beer and vodka soda because the most popular drink in a bar is about vodka soda. Is it really? Yeah, I didn't vodka know soda. that. That's just a. Uh, it's easy. Very, it's pretty high alcohol. It's cheap. That, that's right. It's you cheap know. and uh, low, low calorie, relatively relative speaking. compared to beer. Yeah, especially compared to beer. If all you want to do is get drunk, a vodka soda is basically the best way. It's to because that's <laughs> yeah, because it's a drug. It's not much. It's not much different. And and THC users don't take this wrong. It's not much different than the THC drinks. I mean, no, you're, absolutely. You're, you're drinking that to get high rather yeah, than you're not drinking a kind. THC drink because it tastes great. great. <laughs> mm, yummy. No, it's to get high. And, 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 yeah. And right. Although I actually do like the taste of vodka soda. I'll yeah. sip one over the course of like two hours. Okay. I don't know. I'm weird though. I'm like one of the only people on earth who likes the taste of liquor. Oh, really? Yeah. If I could drink, if I could like remove my alcohol receptors and just drink alcohol all the time without getting drunk, I totally would. There you go. I I, I agree with you 100%, Andy. I, if I could just get a, get rid of the drug part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but I would do that in a second because that's the biggest hassle of having a couple of drinks. Is, you yeah. go to sleep. And, mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm asleep. Now, well, I, I don't want to go to sleep. I want to do something else. So, so I want to ask you guys take on something we brought up on the, on the morning show. It was brought up that they can't find any. Kristen Burt brought up the fact they cannot find anybody to host the Oscars anymore. People don't want to do it. Jimmy Kimmel turned it down. All these different people huh. were asked. They turned it down. They don't want to do it. Why do you think that? What happened with the? Because Johnny Carson was the host of the Oscars for how many years? That's well, right. They and have he, no prestige anymore because they're just so obviously phony. Yeah, oh, really? Think. You think that's what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're and they're. I think people are starting to see through the fact that, to a certain extent, there's there's a purchase of some of these awards, and some of the awards are are not just uh, no one's seen the movie. <laughs> they'll pick yeah. some. They'll pick some oddball movie and say, "Well, what's that movie?" You know, they they really turn a blind eye to the most popular movies uh, that have been that year. Uh, and they, they never want to give an award to them because that that's cheap. They got to give it to some art film, which I understand there's a key part of that. But it's a business and, you know, it's a business. Do you think The Godfather in a way ruined the uh, huh. Oscars because it was such a huge hit? It is probably the best movie ever made in my estimation anyway. Uh, do you think it was such a huge hit and everybody just loved it so much that nothing shines quite you know, that ap brightly? Ap after that statement, you might have to stay here until it gets dark. Because people, you know, people are going to have a bunch of people that I think it's Gone with the Wind was the best one in the whole world. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I've never seen Gone with the Wind. No, I watched it for the. Oh, wait, no, not Gone with the Wind. I always mix up Gone with the Wind and the Sound of Music for some you know, reason. Gone with the Wind is a fascinating thing that keep. One thing that uh, I'm, I'm sure people have talked about when it was uh, produced, mm -hmm. the first scene in Gone with the Wind is a slave scene. Right, yes. And uh, the first first line in the movie is quitting time. And the slave master, he says, no, not the master. He was the foreman, the slave foreman. He was another slave. Oh, okay. He says, I'm the one that says when it's quitting time. Oh. And then immediately he says, <clears throat> quitting time. Mm -hmm. And what, what that says is that the main character is uh vivian lee who plays that main character she acts exactly that way she doesn't want to be told what to do she oh, wants yeah. to be yeah. she wants to be the director of her destiny yet throughout the movie she has no she's just cut loose and drifting because she can't control it during mm -hmm. the civil war i mean very well crafted to start with three lines that show the plot of the whole movie very interesting so in that way it's really well done the movie what three and a half hours long or something oh, like that oh yeah you're peeing two or three times during that on with the wind let's yeah. see how long is it it's three and a half four hours or something i think but they, it yeah. is <clears throat> pending 221 minutes yeah without the overture and intermission and such 221 yeah. minutes. Yeah. No, well, that's why they so need the intermission. It's almost four back. hours long. They need the intermission back. I agree 100%. I used to love the intermission. Oh, yeah. Go on out to the lobby the and get go, the go, seven go, up. Go. It was <laughs> phenomenal. I loved that little little dancing cartoon figure. <laughs> yeah. yeah <what> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's uh what was what was what's the uh oh what was what was the characters uh, the characters were uh Meatwad, uh Shake and Fry. <laughs> yes. That that, that yeah. Aquatine yeah. Hunger Force. Uh, Aquatine Hunger Force. So, yeah, they should have them do do that Phenomenal. do that uh, intermission. I think it'd be the great I'm yeah, surprised because you, they haven't. You go out and get a little more candy, maybe a little more popcorn, another drink. Sure. You Absolutely. know, talk to people. Oh, what do you think of that movie? So, oh, it's kind of, I you know, I that was always a, a nice part of the movie. I, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. The the intermission for a movie, I would say over two hours, they should have an intermission. Yeah. But I would say The Godfather is just, yeah, it might be the best movie ever made. It is and an overall, amazing movie. Overall, just a great story of of, of just uh, that group of people um, and, and uh, organ- you know, the Italian mob. Or I don't know what polite name you, you put on someone like that. But that was, yeah, really well done. And the... Uh, and the stress associated with that and, and the conniving and the planning and all that sort of stuff. Very interesting. Well I was done. told this, and I think it is true. They never use the word mafia once in the movie. Oh, no. And that's because the mafia said, you can't call us the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Which I oh, think is hilarious. That's right. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll, it's like, like my friend who was going to, a friend that was going to write a book. Uh, about uh, the comings and goings of a restaurant in Chicago. Oh God! And, and, and they, he was called up to the office, and there was somebody there uh, that um, he was dressed well. He was, and he said and they, he talks about the book. Oh no, we no names. You know, we're just going to have these the book. It's going to be a great book. Talk about the comings and goings here. You know, some of the scandals and blah 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 blah. And the guy says, "There'll be no book." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be no book. I remember that. <laughs> there'll be no book. You know, there'll be no use of that word. Exactly. No, they do not like the word mafia. They don't like it. Andy, was it Joe Colombo that was the guy that stepped up in New York and said, you can't use the word mafia? Joe Colombo? Joe Colombo, I believe, was the guy who said that. And, and, so, and he was executed about a year uh, or two later. Is it a is it a, uh, is it a derogatory Italian word? For I mean, mafia? It, yeah. I mean, it's, I guess that's the way they look at it. Yeah. What about the Cosa Nostra? <clears throat> La Co- La Cosa they Nostra make- is what they actually call themselves. Yes, they do. La Cosa uh, Nostra. Oh man, no, that's a group. That's a group of people that um, uh, you don't want to mess with. Some of the, a lot of those gangs, yes, uh, you, you don't want to mess with, and, and particularly when they have the closeness uh, associated with in the sense of uh, family, familia. They La familia, very, very important. It, it, very important. And, you know, once you once you're made, I mean, you are part of that family. And you are not going to be leaving that nope. family. You're part of that family. What would so. you find out, Andy? Joe Colombo? Um, it was someone named Anthony. Oh, Anthony was his Joe Colombo's middle name. So I don't know if that would be his son or what. Oh, yeah. so it was he or his son? Because yeah. Joe Colombo was murdered. I think he was doing a speech in, uh, in New York and somebody shot and killed him. Wow. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, it was his... Dad, I think uh, uh, everything here is paywalled because legacy media is dying. But oh, really? The uh, closest thing I've got is yeah, Anthony was does his is his father Anthony? Yeah. Yes, his father was Anthony Colombo. So it was his father. Yeah. Okay, it was his father. All right. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that for sure, but it just and the amazing thing is for people, you know, some people might not know this. There was never an Italian mob in Minnesota because of the mobs here were Jewish. Really? Absolutely. Kid can. Yeah. Lived on, I think, 15th and Penn. In Minneapolis, remember. but in, in St. Minneapolis. Paul. St. Paul. They did have some Italian yeah, they, gatherings. Didn't they, didn't they have didn't they have sort of an understanding with the police is that they're welcome to be there absolutely in a safe, in a sort of like a safe haven, safe town, as long as they kept their business out of that town. Yeah, and didn't Al Capone used to come to yeah, town once on yeah. his way up to his Wisconsin cabin, <laughs> I guess. He wouldn't have to go through Minnesota, but he did anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was an interesting period, I bet, all of that stuff. Oh. But, yeah, and growing up, that was brought up because, I mean, in the 1950s, I used to hear about that all the time because that was through pretty much the 50s, I think. You know, and 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 always in the, in the uh, oh, what do I want to say, the... But not you. We didn't live in a ghetto. You lived in a, you lived in a sort of a poor community. Uh, uh, where well, you, it became where you very ghettoy. Oh well, well, like ghetto. I I kind of think ghetto is people living in, you know, living in the cardboard shacks and well, stuff yeah, like that. I mean, I mean, deal, you were yeah. you and you were fed. I mean, there was the thing that you were fed. I mean, you were you, it. There was 
and everybody lived together. Uh, a lot of people were employed. So it, it's, it's just a little bit different when I think of a ghetto. But where you lived, you know, typically organized crime is part in is involved. There's in no that. question about, about it. That. Whether, you know, because they help that community, the community sort of sort of ex- accepts them and, you know, provides things for them. Well, I used to own a house. My The very first house I ever bought was at 35th and Penn Avenue North. Mm-hmm. And Tevin's been looking at the news. So far in the last three days, eight people have been murdered within one block of that house. <laughs> it's like, holy oh, Anna. Man. Yeah, I mean, it was, it wasn't like that then, but it kind of came in. Ooh, they got troubles up there. Plymouth <laughs> Avenue at first was the, 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 the big, the, for the Jewish mob, Plymouth Avenue was the very big part of that. Mm-hmm. Big, big part of that. So I don't know. It just, it's a whole different. And what was the name of the TV show that looked at the making of the Godfather? That was a really good show. Oh, what, what, what was the name of that? Andy. Oh, yeah. I remember it was just on last year. Correct. Yeah. The offer. The, the offer. offer. Yeah. The there offer. you go. Did you watch it, Andy? No. It's really interesting. We don't really watch a whole lot of TV these days. Yeah. You were telling me you don't watch a lot of TV. Is it? <laughs> oh, I, just a quick aside here. It's only going to take about right. 30 seconds. So how'd your boy like uh, the monkey bread? He was a big fan. <laughs> well, he knew he knew something was coming the whole day. So as soon as I got home. Oh, he did? He told me, you know. How did he know it was coming? I told Melissa not to let him eat too much before I got oh, home. Oh, so there he, you go. So he knew. Spoil it. So he loved his monkey bread. Yep, he sure did. We were at, at, Heated when... it up a little and gave it to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Benedict's and Wyzetta. Oh, yeah. Serves monkey bread. And the first time Ethan had it was what, about a month ago, something like that, Andy? Month and a yeah, half? Yeah, around then. He lit up like a Christmas tree. Boy, that monkey bread is one of his favorites. It's mm. caramel flavored roll. It's just, oh, it's basically yeah. like a roll that's covered in caramel. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, though. <laughs> and the ratio of, of dough to caramel is, is like 50 50. It's 50 yeah. 50. <laughs> you know, you're not getting a yeah. lot of, you know, you're getting, uh, you don't get too much dough yeah. in it. It's like a cinnamon roll, but with caramel instead of no it's a dough is a vehicle or... for sugar and cinnamon yes yes it is <laughs> yeah that's it's very a, it's good it's a vehicle it's a vehicle to have there yeah they, they're uh yeah our, my uh, grandkids they were both uh introduced to uh, cinnabon <clears throat> and uh, they hit they, they they bought them one of the big cinnabons and both of them a four-year-old and a six-year-old ate the whole thing i god only knows mm. i can't eat a whole thing it just so much i used to be able to eat a whole anything <laughs> a whole anything yep and go home doesn't and, matter what it is i could eat it all and then go home and lay face down no sleep. i mean when i was a teenager i could eat whatever and not feel sick or full yeah i don't know that is not true anymore no i suppose not now earlier on the on the morning show we were talking about how things pair up and of course when you think of uh an alcoholic drink with pizza it's always beer yeah well frequently in wisconsin yeah that would make sense yeah i i I won Lindsay over from beer to wine red wine with with the pizza oh yeah no i just i was kind of because most people when you think of pizza you think of beer so when you think of whiskey that would be like steak maybe Yeah. yeah steak whiskey and steak is a good combo whiskey and steak's a good combo so basically Wine, you're talking about pasta, things yeah, like pa- that. Pa- well, we're sort of Italian. Wine, or any, pasta, wine would like go that. with steak too. Yeah, wine with steak is good. Or too. fish. I mean, wine goes with basically anything. That's probably true. Except spaghettios. Right. Yeah, probably not. Or good lunchables. <laughs> <laughs> lunchables and wine. Well, I don't know. And if you put a little hot sauce on the lunchables, you might. Mm, you there might you go. Right there you got. There you got something. I wonder how often someone's paired a lunchables with wine before. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not too frequent. Oh, I'm I'm certain it I'm certain it's on the internet. Like any I'm uh, sure any culinary perversion there. It's it's there somewhere. Culinary perversion. perversion. That's, that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> you know, that's that's where it is. It's on the internet. There's just like all other perversion. You type any series of words, there's a website that's for true. it. There's that's a website true. for it. So okay, we got a uh, a message for you. This is from uh Jim. Okay. Jim sent it. Uh, for the doctor, your thoughts, THC drink products to be used socially are fine. Same legal issues with regard to responsibility. Side note with medical marijuana, don't misuse based on prescription. So what what are they talking about there? Misuse based on prescription, prescription. of what? Well, prescription. You don't need a prescription anymore. You buy it at the Muni and Wyzetta. Yeah, you do buy it. <laughs> you can buy it at the Muni and Wyzetta. Yeah, and, and, 
and you know, I have I have at least one acquaintance, and uh, her and her husband prefer splitting one of those in the evening uh, for sleep, for mm-hmm. relaxation, just to you know, to chill out, I guess. And you know, it's going to cut into alcohol sales, I think. Uh, yeah, probably. Extent. But it's a, that's a different experience uh, for people, and it's not for everybody. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, well, that's, I heard I heard your description of uh, of it. You feeling like you have early stage Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and uh, ataxia, and it, you know, after hearing that, I said, I don't know, I'm yeah, going to be trying that. And it didn't just, find oh. it fun. Yeah, and then you throw in a little paranoia uh, if you get a little too. I mean, it's it's just a, it's. It, I don't think it's a comfortable thing. Not for me, uh, but certainly a lot of people really mm-hmm. uh, enjoy uh, the high or the effects of it. And I and I think it's probably one of the. Uh, we'll see. We're going to see over time, but it may sh- show to be uh, safer than some like alcohol. Uh, I don't think it's going to be safer than cigarettes if you're smoking it. And I think that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's my that's yeah. my big uh, block is don't be smoking it. First off, it's offensive to many people, particularly me. The smell and that I, smells horrible. You know, it's one of the worst smells in the world. And when, <laughs> is it, that's what well, would that be? The south end of a skunk. Mm. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Oh, it's just heav- it's that heavy odor that yeah. I, I don't care for. But it, if but t- using it in other ways, and you can if you're drinking it or you're you're vaping it. But even then, those lung issues, your lungs are a yep. very sensitive thing. Yep. And my concern is that when it's legalized nationally, then it's going to be packs of cigarettes that are mm-hmm. going to be available, and yep. people are going to smoke two packs of marijuana cigarettes every day really oh of course oh absolutely smoke, yeah. people smoke two three four packs of uh, regular cigarettes every day oh, that's chain true. smokers i mean yep. and that that'll give you a conversational dyspnea uh right there where you where you're short where, where you're sitting down talking and you're short of breath conversational dyspnea oh in. god i mean that, that, that that's a reality because it's so hard on your lungs and vaping is hard on your lungs too yeah, oh, absolutely. So it be is. very careful of uh, overusing vaping as well. So. Yeah, you don't want to ingest anything in your lungs, do you? Is there any? I mean, it's not a good idea. It's yeah, there are many good things. Steroids, that's, there's certain steroids. That's about all you want in your lungs. They're, air. they're very fragile, uh, a very fragile organ. I mean, you know, if you've ever seen a lung from an animal outside the body, there's nothing, there's nothing to that. Once you collect, it, it starts out, and once you collapse it and get all the air out and get all the blood out, decreases by 90 percent mm-hmm. there's no tissue there it's just a very fragile environment that you're exchanging this uh, oxygen uh for the carbon dioxide in your blood and that's it's you do not want to be you know just smoking or putting any anything bad like that chronically in your lungs yeah that does make sense. trash them. i have to read you this headline in a star tribune this morning because the doctor is in ladies there and is, gentlemen thank you i looked at this and i went no my initial, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm not an expert, but I looked at them and went, this is not real. U of M study finds stunning impact of poverty on cell functions. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> you mean malnutrition? <laughs> sure. Define poverty, though, because poverty well, means a lot of different things in a lot of different places. You're right about that. Poverty's impact on human biology has unanticipated persistence damaging cells in a way that endures even after they are transplanted into other people okay so here's here's your problem here's your problem okay here's your problem first off uh just like uh you don't pay your fair share there's no definition of fair share Mm -hmm. so what's their definition of poverty exactly okay are you talking about people who are living in the bush in central africa right you know which is could be looked looked on as poverty or are you looking at people who are eat or, or uh, don't have a great income that are eating large amounts of fast food because they're cheap calories? That'll impact mm. your biology, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's that kind of thing. Um, so you know, and then if you t- talk about then certain groups might have a greater uh, reason they're in poverty is because of their chronic use of illicit drugs or alcohol or other things. Right. So, so this, it's such a multifactorial kind of thing is that, oh, poverty trashes your cells. Well, not necessarily because there's a lot of, there's a yes. lot of people who are in poverty that live to be 90, 100, two, you know, Absolutely. not 200 yet. Uh, <laughs> not quite. Not 200 yet, but, 120. But, but, uh, but over 100. So, so much of that is genetic too. And then of course, people that are in poverty, is there a genetic link to the reason they're in poverty? Yes. 
Right. Well, see, that's the uh, another good point. You're absolutely right. You know, right. is there a genetic link uh, to to why they're in poverty? Because they're more sensitive to, to drugs and they they take more drugs, they take more alcohol. I mean, this, it is just a bizarre thing. But you should say poverty is linked to cell function. Uh, I don't know about that. But I, but the, the, the other pieces of poverty can be linked to cell function. I can see that. But what that link is. No one knows. Well, so here is the study itself. So it's cancer patients who receive stem cells from donors who lived in poverty were more likely to die. But they were 6.6% more likely to die. Yeah, you have to so That's look. a pretty small amount. You have to look at the, the statistical relevance of that. That's yeah. the thing that they have, though, go through that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's a study over three years for 2,000 people. Who received transplants for blood cancer specifically? Yeah, but where where did they? I don't know how did they? So they they keep the demographics on the donors. I doubt it. That's the thing. From Although the I guess a course. donor, you'd kind of you can reverse engineer the demographics, right? Because you know, like has to go into like, or else you get you know graft versus host disease for oh, like a marrow transplant. Yeah, you, know, it, it, you basically have to be as genetically identical as possible, or else bad things can happen. Yeah, it's typed and screened, and then it's and, and mm -hmm. genetically checked, and that right. sort of stuff. So, uh, then, then again, with that group who are receiving that, you know, are they from that same group? Apparently, the disparity existed even after factoring out differences such as race. No, I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about lifestyle choices. Yeah, well, that that's the thing. That people. You know, and then maybe they factored that out too. No, that sort of thing. You have to look at that whole study, and they may have gone through those sort of things. But I would, I had a lot of questions about that poverty linked to your cell function. Right. I mean, six point six percent is a pretty small increase. Well, it so, might be. Might, it might be statistically significant. That's the thing, and they don't publish that unless it is. You know, yeah. Two percent is something that may not be statistically significant. Six percent. Uh, once they do the. The, the <clears throat> chi square studies and all that sort of stuff might be statistically significant. It could be, but of course, the uh, the study itself is paywalled as well. Oh, is that in paywall? Of course, everything paywalled, is paywalled pay, 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 yep. at the university. They don't want to put the whole study out so people can uh, really which talk is about insane. It. The fact that they paywall studies is just crazy to me. Yeah, not to mention that that study probably was funded by. Uh, uh, grants. Yeah, it's from the U of M. Of course, it was gr grants. Yeah. From money that we paid as taxes. I mean, so you know, those grants come through the federal government, through state government, and that they only got money because we gave them money. So no, so, you're absolutely so right. They, about they, that. that should be free. That should be open uh, information to everybody. They shouldn't be trying to, you know, make money on the back end of this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this: when I was a kid growing up, and it was a different world back then. I do understand, but nobody smoked more cigarettes than poor people. Well, yeah, My that's God. They used to smoke a lot of cigarettes. Well, let's Whew. see, cigarette smoking by income bracket. Is it still significant? I guarantee you it is. <laughs> I guarantee you. And, it and, is. and uh, in, inter another interesting thing is that you know, there was the the show about Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. Yep. Heavy, a lot of smoking. Yeah. In yep. That, in that show, there was another movie that uh, I was I watched a lot of smoking in this current movie move currently made mm -hmm. and there are the two video games fallout and red dead red dead redemption red dead redemption takes place hundred something years ago so that makes but, sense but a lot of, but but uh fallout is in the future technically in the future it's like yeah. retro future. a lot of smoking yeah. i saw that yeah, yeah. there's a lot well, of if i lived smoking. in the fallout world i'd probably smoke too to be yeah. honest yeah, but there's the thing about it make is it that, get over is quicker smoking is being shown uh wholesale in in these these things which surprised me that because they, for it, a long time it, you couldn't you couldn't even depict smoking and oh, that's right yeah that's right yeah you know so you know it's it's a, i see that as very interesting is that there's a lot of smoking being shown and i you know is there funding coming from an mm -hmm. industry that wants you to smoke one of my favorite uh, tie-ins to smoking is from the game called uh, metal gear solid oh yeah it's for the playstation so this was well over 20 years ago yeah so there's a you can equip different items and one of those items is a cigarette and when you equip the cigarette every so often you hear this little dinging sound 
and you're at first you're like, what in the hell is that? And it turns out that while the cigarette is equipped, your health drains very, very slowly. So slowly that you might not notice at first. Ha. So you can wow. literally smoke yourself to death in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I, I thought that was well, a nice well touch because it's like S -S Snake is always shown as smoking and like, you know, he's like, <laughs> he's the cool <laughs> badass guy. Snake. Yes. So <laughs> Snake his name smoking. is Snake. Yeah, but he's like the cool badass guy. So, of course, he's got to smoke. But then they also included like, hey, if you smoke, you'll die. So I have a yeah. question. You can be cool, but yeah. you'll also be dead. So well, I don't know. How was a snake light a cigarette? <laughs> Where did it, it was, people are lighting his cigarettes for him. He's being enabled. Yeah, I guess. He was being enabled. Because <laughs> he got no way. up to a fire. There you go. Oh, I suppose, yeah, that's just true. Just hold it in your mouth and go over the fire. <laughs> it's easy enough. So 12% uh, of people who make $100,000 or more smoke 12 percent smoke uh for less than twenty thousand dollars a year that number is 32 percent. yeah there you so it's it's what it used to man, be you know yeah. and man smoking burns through a lot that's the thing money. is like oh yeah less than twenty thousand dollars i mean you smoke a pack a day and there goes what like a fifth of your income right there Ten bucks so isn't that pack of cigarettes now like ten dollars uh, you know, it depends on where you are. Sounds I think about if, if right. You go through that, I think in New York, it's over 10. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, probably I, 15 I, in New York. Yeah, yeah I, I have no idea. But, you know, that's like, it's like $4,000 a year. So there you go. There's a fifth of that $20,000. God. That just, just talk, talk about ruining your income. So, so that keeps you in, in poverty. $4,000 yeah. yep. goes a long way when in you a, ain't got much money. In a big way, yeah. It's going to affect your, it's going to affect your diet because you don't have the money to spend on you know, healthier foods, quality mm -hmm. foods, mm -hmm. you know, and you're hitting McDonald's, the cheap, the cheap calories. We, I mean, it just pushes you there. We first heard that cigarettes were bad for you. What in like the late mid to late sixties. Yeah. Mid to late sixties. That's when they, yeah. that's when they, people started saying, yeah, smoking may not be that good. And the cigarette company said, Oh, it's the best thing in the world. They had doctors on said, Oh, smoke lucky. Three there. out of four <laughs> physicians. <laughs> <laughs> Recommend. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so they had this huge, a push and they kept it that quiet oh for 10 years and then they finally said you got to put labels on these things these are killers well i will never forget watching winston cigarettes hosted by i mean winston cigarettes hosting uh fred and barney mm -hmm. on the flintstones they would wow. smoke cigarettes <laughs> winston Man. tastes good like a cigarette should fred <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, I'll never forget those commercials. Well, they're cavemen. They haven't had the studies yet. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. They were cavemen. Technically, if they were cavemen, they should be chewing the leaves, though. Yeah, that's true. Not smoking. They just break the cigarette in half and dump it into their mouths. No, that's right. But that's, boy, that, that's a good, that's an interesting history, how tobacco was discovered, mm -hmm. you know, because they can find remnants of that and, you know, fecal samples that have been discarded. They can find out what people have been eating and that's how cocaine was discovered is the coca leaves people would chew them and get, oh. a, little, get a little buzz yeah. oh, okay. so then one day someone decided hey what if i extract this well, that, and uh yeah that's the, the that, rest is history that uh, reminds me of the co a comment uh, uh, that it was a brave man who ate the first oyster yep oh god yes <laughs> just looking at it mm -hmm. just even looking at an oyster Jim Gavin, there's a lot of things uh, that are just like Jim Gaffigan says, "Hey, I find I, I busted this rock open. It looks like it's filled with snot. What should I do? <laughs> eat it? Just eat it? <laughs> no, I guess they learned it by watching otters because that's all they do, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. They break them open on the rocks and then they eat them. You know, maybe, yum, maybe, yum. and maybe that's how. Okay, yeah, maybe that's how you learn both that you know what's what you can eat, what you get, what's inside that that animal's eating. Mm -hmm. Because when you're hungry." You're ready to eat. You're going to eat it, whatever yeah. it is. I suppose that is true. Or you just eat the animal that's eating the thing. That's right. Isn't yeah. it interesting all these different things that happened? Well, Andy, I, like in, in Ralph and my generation, a lot of the things that people did back then, they it just you don't see them doing anymore. No, but I see the smoking in media more and more. And it, it that's an interesting thing because it was a, it's it's really hard on your health. But why are we seeing it again? And which, yeah, you know, that's a good point. interesting. Why are we seeing this in this woke uh, environment? Why are we seeing that in particular? People you know, forget. I guess you know it's like the Gen X and Boomer generations saw a lot of older people die from smoking, 
Like I bet, I bet almost everyone over the age of 50 has personally seen someone die from cigarette related illness. Oh yeah. Almost yep. all of them, but a young person hasn't. So they hear all about the dangers of smoking, but it doesn't really register to them because, you know, hearing and seeing are very different things. So yeah, I got to be honest with you. My father died at 60 years old. And I think most of that was because he smokes. He mm -hmm. sm smoked Paul Mall straights his whole life. Yep. Smoking. But that's unfiltered. Unfiltered. Smoking does, in fact, kill. Paul yeah. Mall. Paul oh, Mall straights. Man. I will not. Paul Mall still available? Paul Mall? I, I don't know. I have to. I, 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 yep, I on around. occasion, will stop at the, at the convenience store and I will specifically look at the brands to yeah. see what's, see if that's changed at all. And it really hasn't. No, Territons are there. Camels are there. Chesterfield's there. Lucky Strike is there. Mm -hmm. All those brands, which were you know were condemned and still condemned, are not. I shouldn't say condemned, but they're they're the labels are on the packages. They're still getting along just fine selling those cigarettes. You know, it's hilarious. I just had this pop into my head when I was 16 years old. I was called into one of the directors at North High School's office. And they said, Tom. Um, we're going to ask you to do something. We're going to ask you to try to test out of school because, you know, you only show up about half the time anyway. And it seems like you're bright enough. You could probably test out. So um, they had, they gave me these tests and I'd pass them all. They said, the only problem is you got to come in for homeroom because then they still get the money. Ah, there you go. See, so they would still get the money for me. So for like a year and a half, I had to go to homeroom for five minutes and then I'd leave. Right. But the most important thing about that was not just the testing out part, was not the fact that I did test out, not the fact that I had to stick around for homeroom every day for a year and a half or whatever. The first thing, I, I know I remember her name, but I won't say it because she probably still got relatives in the state and all the rest of it. I sat down. She goes, uh, hey, Tom, you got a cigarette? And I gave her an old gold and she smoked the old gold while she was talking. She asked a 16 year old boy, do you have any cigarettes? And I did. Well, she knew you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I started smoking. When I was like 11. And, and she smoked it in the school room. In the, in the, right there in her office. In the I school. remember yep. when I was very young, people used to smoke indoors still. Oh yeah. God. They, yes. they probably stopped by the time I was like 12, but I remember it happening. When I was, when I was uh, in college, the first uh, year I was in college, my English professor, uh, smoked in the classroom, mm -hmm. English ovals. Oh my English God. Ovals. And there was a, I, for whatever reason, I, there was something when we would do that, it was some sort of a romance to that. I, I didn't smoke, but I, there was not a romance, but it was a, I don't know. There was an aesthetic to it that mm -hmm. just was charming you know, that he was doing this. He would he'd take the cigarette out and he'd light it. He was smoking the English ovals. God. I, 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 what if I, I ever become a professor, I'm going to smoke pipes. You're going to smoke a pipe? <laughs> mm -hmm. If you become a professor. Yep. If I ever become a professor, for some reason, I will smoke a pipe and wear a tweed jacket <laughs> are you with gonna, those, are, the patches on the elbows. Okay. Well, yep. so are you, are you going to smoke a Mitterschein pipe? That, and what kind of what kind of carving are you going to have on that bowl? Mm, I should do one of the um, the Sherlock Holmes pipes that go like this. Oh, well, that's right. That would have, but there's a carving on the bowl. Or, you know, you, who are you going to have? What are you going to have? On there? You're going to have snakes on the bowl. You're going to have a naked mermaid on the bowl. You're going to have a, just a guy's face with a beard on the bowl. I mean, you got all sorts of Sea captain you... kind of pipe. <laughs> yeah. I'll That's become it. a professor, but I'll dress up and talk like a sea captain. Yo, ho, 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 pirate's life for me. There you go. You see the area <laughs> under the curve here. <laughs> I just uh, had something pop up on my screen, and I don't. We won't get deeply into it, but I just don't understand this headline. Uh, Karen Tolkien, Tolkien, Tolkien. I'm Tolkien? guessing that would be the daughter of J.R.R. Tolkien. It probably is, maybe, maybe granddaughter. Yeah, maybe. Tolkien. It's T-O-L-K-K-I-N-E-N. Tolkien. No, that's okay. Different. That's not Tolkien. No, it's not Tolkien. Tolkien. Karen Tolkien. The headline says. A Trump victory could threaten Finland. <laughs> That's, what uh, the hell? What What does that mean? That sounds like a randomly generated headline. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? I, Finland. Uh, Karen, call in if you're listening, which I <laughs> doubt you are. But She why? is the, let's see, meet Karen Tolkien in our new greater Minnesota columnist okay. from the Star Tribune. Well, what does she mean that it's going to be a threat to Finland? Well, it says she'll focus on everything but the Twin Cities and that sure is true, apparently. Well, let me click on it and see if what uh, 
As Duluth celebrates Finnish culture, the country's security, and that of Europe may hinge on U.S. election. Come on. Mm-hmm. Gee, really? Uh, I, I think so if Trump gets elected, that's going to be it for Europe. No huh? more Finland. That's right. Goodbye, everything Finland. everything, everything is going to change. The world order is going to change. You know, you could say that's that's a possibility whoever's in office. <laughs> that's a possibility whoever's mm-hmm. in office. Oh, suppose, if, you elect, but... if you elect somebody, you know, who has strong opinions and changes things, that's one thing. Or you can elect somebody who has who is weak, you know, whatever. I mean, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. You know, there's people that are weak, too. Uh, Republicans that, that are weak. Well, same thing can happen because people just say, hey, these people are weak. They're not doing anything. And they just run over people. So I, I well, yeah. let me ask a question here. And I'm not going to point out either p- political party, but you'll be able to figure out for yourself. How are we ever going to pay back $36 trillion yeah. that Where they've that? spent? Where's that money coming from? Where's that money going to come from? We're going to go under because of the pissing away of the money in this country. And people that are conservative, they're supposed to not spend as much, spent plenty. They spent plenty, not yeah, as so much as the other side, but plenty. Pl- pl- plenty. So, you know, they we, we spent a lot, given away a lot. You know, there's a lot. I don't know where we're going to get that. We get that money to just bend that down. No one's are we spend it. We put any money on the principal for how long? Is it 50 years? We've not paid on the no, principal. No, we just pay the interest. That's exactly right. I, I just don't understand how anybody can say either party's doing a great job right now because we are so deeply in debt. We will never get out of it. No, no chance. I don't think any countries. That I don't think any country plans on ever getting out of debt. No, I think point. you're right. You're probably well, right. Well, who holds the debt? Yeah, who does hold the debt? That's what I'd like to know. You know, who holds the debt? I says, hey, we're not paying it. Ah, <laughs> sorry. I guess. Apparently the, wow, the country that owns the most U.S. debt is Japan. Japan, yep. That's very ooh, weird. We, we don't want to. Japan, then China. Japan has $1.1 trillion of debt. China only has seven hundred fifty billion, so Japan is like the plurality by quite a bit. And then the UK, and then Luxembourg, Luxembourg, and then Canada. Canada is what in what in fifth place? Uh, one, two, three, yes. Of holding the least debt, most, the most debt, most, yeah, well, well, most of our debt. So we owe the most to, so we oh, to Canada. I see. So okay. we should just tell Canada, we're not paying that debt. You become part of the United States. There you go. You get the benefits of being in the United States, but you don't get that debt. Well, with DEI now, they'd fit right in. Yeah. I mean, they would. I I, oh, I don't know if this is actually true anymore. Oh, really? I think this might be old. Old info? Let's see what The Guardian says. The Guardian says. Well, it says me, that we have $16 trillion dollars in debt, so that's not right. Your headphones uh, not working? Headphones died, huh? He's got it now. He's got the new, newly charged ones. Now we're good to go. No, yeah, no that's uh, that's what this other site says too. So what is it saying? It says what I said. Japan is the highest. Oh, so Japan, wow. China, um, UK, Luxembourg, UK and Canada. Luxembourg and Canada. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Japan and spend some money there. I have a question for you. I mean, obviously not Japan or China, but. The other countries, we saved their ass in World War One and World War Two. There you go. So don't they kind of owe us anyway? And and they got a big payout with the uh, Marshall Plan. Absolutely. The Marshall Plan. Re- yep. oh, wait, the Marshall Plan rebuilt Europe and, and the damage all over Europe, uh, Germany included. And I think it went to Japan as well. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The Marshall Plan still going. Yeah. So I wonder... Uh, which is bizarre. One of these days, they're just going to say this that across the the world is just wiped out. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, because a lot, all, so many countries have debt, so we should all just say, "Hey, that's it. we're just wipe it all to zero and let's move on." Yeah, that's what they're going to have to do. Yeah, I mean, and that that's the whole problem is that the arguments that I hear against this party or that party or blah blah blah, whoever's pissing away the most money, I ain't voting for you. That's just how it is. There you go. If you're pissing away all our money, I have no interest in voting for you. Yeah. And they both do it, don't they? Oh, yeah. So I don't know. Jesus. You know, they, they you know, across the board, they spend they spend the money more than what they can possibly afford. And, and no one is. 
Uh, Andy, when was the last time we paid on the principal of our debt? Can you find out? Oh, you mean like how, when's the last time it, the principal actually reduced? Yeah, the principal actually reduced. So we paid on the principal. Uh, let's see here. Has it ever happened? Well, that's a, I don't know if it's ever happened. I wonder happened. if it's I ever happened. It. I doubt that it's ever happened. Federal debt. Oh, it looks like uh, after World War II, it went down quite a bit. Oh, because we saved everyone's then, ass. Went down right. again in the late 90s. Ooh, in the late, late 90s. Isn't that Reagan? Oh, that would have been Reagan then, right? If that's actually accurate, hard to say. Late 90s? No. Yeah. No. No. No, he was late 80s. Late 90s was Bill Clinton, wasn't it? Yeah. I can't even remember him. See, oh, that this uh, ABC says it's never gone down so it's never gone down i think it's probably right that's what that's closer to the truth i mean it hasn't yeah. significantly <laughs> gone down uh, exactly. you know. right there are years that it looks like it hasn't gone up or it's barely gone up but yeah ever since uh basically ever since obama took office the new thing is just to stack that debt as much as possible yeah. even trump did it yeah Oh, oh yeah, that's, yeah. My, that's my yeah. point. It is not just a conservative thing, or not just a liberal thing. It no, just, it's not. They just they spend that money. It's spend money. Well, apparently, the reason Japan owns so much of our debt is because they bought it from other countries. Really? So we owe debt to another country, and then Japan was like, "We'll buy this debt," and then now the U.S. owes Japan. And basically, the idea is that they're using us as like a reserve for money. So if we owe them a trillion dollars, they can come to us and say, hey, you know, pay up at some point. You think it's a good idea to owe a lot of money to somebody you nuked? <laughs> I mean, Japan's pretty fond of the U.S. at this point. Yeah, at I'd this say. point, they uh, are. But... I've been in the countryside and they don't like gaijin. Well, not... no, of course. <laughs> you know, the, the Japanese government. If I, if I can, as a white person, if I can ever say I felt racism the way black people have or other racial mm -hmm. groups in other countries have. Yeah, I was there, man. We got to that wasabi farm, and man, that guy did not like the looks of us. He really? Was, oh, he was pissed. Well, off. Japanese people get very nervous around foreigners that don't speak Japanese. Yeah, they, you have to speak because Japanese. Because people come uh, up to them, and they start going, like, talking to them in English, and they don't know how to respond, no, and they're not. We were with we were with a national speaking perfect, you know, perfect Japanese, a, tr a travel writer there. And no, it was more than that, Andy. I, I, I understand that they might be uncomfortable because there's, there's well, that, elements yeah. of honor and element of there's, there's just pieces to their culture that you have to respect. Now this guy, he hated whitey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I hated whitey. depending on his age, you can't really blame him too much. No, 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 no. I, I, I you know, it just, it dealt with, but that was a definite racism yeah. there against white people. And mm -hmm. you know, they still had, they still have an edge. You burn up a bunch of, well, specifically Americans, weapons. probably That's not good. Uh, Americans. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. Because in the movie Oppenheimer, they claimed that the Japanese had already surrendered, and then we nuked them. I don't think but that's you look back at history; accurate. that's that's not true. No, so why would a movie claim that we nuked them after they surrendered when it's not true? No, no, that that was an insinuation. They they may have gone. They there was that they may have wanted to surrender, but the analytics that I've always right. seen or heard, it's yeah. I've looked it up before, and it's kind of like one of those half truths. Oh, okay. Where the Japanese had been defeated and were more or less out of the war, but they weren't going to surrender. They were just going to bide their time, build back up, and then yeah, attack okay. again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, you know, they had been defeated, but they were still fighting, and they weren't ever going to stop. Yeah, that was there was a there was a sense. Yeah, there was a sense that er, the whole uh, the whole country would. Uh, die or commit suicide mm -hmm. you know fighting uh as opposed to being just say hey this is how it's, this is what happens and they go oh. all right the japanese empire was <laughs> yeah you don't surrender no you don't no, particularly with the emperor uh that was just not part of their culture uh and, and, and to a certain extent it still isn't i mean either there's elements of that that are still mm -hmm. there but not militarily i mean they're not that they're you know <clears> you just they're not it's just different culture. Oh, it's so, like uh, in Japan, sleeping at your desk is considered a sign of being a good worker because you're working yourself so much that uh, you yeah. are falling asleep yep. at your desk. Yeah. Or as you sleep at your desk in America and the boss is going to fire you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But the fact they do drink heavy there. They can, <laughs> they can drink a little oh, bit. So yeah. Being at your desk. Oh, yeah. That, that, you go out with your boss. 
Your yep. boss is drinking. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you you gotta, have to keep up. You, you have to keep up. And, you, and you, that's why the salary, the drunken salary man is such a, such a big uh, stereotype over there. It's because it's, it's what happens. It's a team building thing or yeah. like they, it's like a camaraderie kind of yeah. thing. They, the boss takes all the employees out to drink and they just drink an insane amount and then they all stumble <laughs> home and fall asleep. Or and then the next day at six o'clock in the morning, they're back at work. That's right. You have to you go to the capsule hotel and just sleep it off a yeah. little bit. And that's a, that's a really rough work culture they have over there. It is getting better, but it's still very like you, demanding. You're, you're expected yeah. to work a lot. Basically work is your life for until you retire. Yeah. So I have a question for you guys. We only got a couple of minutes left here. So I just want to ask you your take on this. Why is it that politicians on both sides or on all sides, uh, Hollywood and the news industry find it very important to bend the truth or flat out lie to the people constantly? Why do they lie so much? Because they can't. Yeah. They I mean, can because that's their power. They, 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 that's their power. Mm -hmm. You guess. know, they, they want to exert that power and influence however they can because then they get, they get, you know, good, uh, uh, feedback from the party that uh, gets elected. Yeah. Why you does know? the biggest kid in class pick on the smallest kid? Yeah. Because he can. Because he can, I guess. You know, you know why? You know, NPR, they have a lot of people that work there. Oh, a lot of people work there. Absolutely. You know, and, that, and I was told by uh, someone who owned one of the, the uh, other uh, competing radio stations in town. Mm -hmm. And then he, he said that that place is just filled with the budget is just astronomical oh, yeah, compared yeah. to a, yep. a regular commercial station. Right? They it's are floating rate. in money. So, yeah, there you go. So there's, oh, they get all this money and they, you know, people get, all these people are working, which is good. I mean, it's good people to work and I'm happy to see that, but that newspapers don't get that money. No, yeah. I just don't understand why people feel, why it need to lie to you. Yeah. It just, I don't know. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's why when you watch news, if you hear anything, you, you have to be skeptical and you have to spend an hour trying to ferret out the truth and mm -hmm. other, uh, the reality of what's going on because you'll never get the straight story, uh, probably from any news in the world. No, you know, you gotta, no I'm sure you that's know, true. you know, if you hear something here, go watch Al Jazeera or go watch, uh, Australian ABC, Australian broadcasting network or CB, CBC, the Canadian brides, they'd get another opinion and get another viewpoint to see if it all jives together. Is that cultural appropriation me using? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm going to get criticism. Like All right. I thought today's show was rather interesting. We covered everything today. Ooh, broad, broad think, stroke Andy? of that brush. We sure did. All right. That's going to do it for the show. We'll talk to you tomorrow.